This is an interesting topic that a lot of you have been requesting for a long time, and I've gotten a lot of stories sent to me that happen to people while listening to my videos. Also, you can listen to all of these stories, plus a few exclusive ones, on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music by clicking the link in the description. When I was 15 years old, I would sometimes sleep over my friend JT's house. He had this cool loft bedroom that was its own floor and was attached to the attic through another half flight of stairs. When we were even younger, we used to have big hide and seek games in his house with our other friends and his brother. JT grew up in this big house with just his mom and his brother. His dad has always been rich and after his parents divorced, he still paid for the house for the three of them to live in. His mom was the kind of 40 something year old woman to go into town every night dressed in overly tight white pants and such. When I was 14, 15, I didn't really realize what she was going out and doing all the time, but it meant he usually had the house to himself weekend nights. This was one of those nights. We smoked a bit of weed and played hours worth of Super Smash Bros. Then when it got later, we decided to watch some Mr. Nightmare videos ironically. We were on our third video, Pizza Delivery Horror Stories. This, funny enough, made us want to order a pizza, so we called one of the only pizza places around us open past 10 and ordered a pie. As we finished the current video we were on, we started watching a Craigslist horror story video, and just as we were genuinely getting spooked by one of the stories, there was a crash sound from up in the attic. The sound of a box falling over and its contents spilling out. It sounded like plastic toys. JT and I looked at each other and freaked out. We went to pause the video, and JT screamed his older brother's name, who wasn't supposed to be home. It was our first instinct to assume that it was his brother trying to scare us, but that would mean he had been hiding in the attic for hours, which seemed unlikely. Given we were already watching scary videos, this only made the situation even more unsettling. JT went up the five carpeted stairs towards the little attic door and opened it. He flicked on the attic light and went inside as I stood behind watching. He immediately said he saw what it was. It was a box full of Hot Wheels cars that fell and spilled out a bunch of the cars. He left it as it was and said he'd clean it tomorrow. He left the attic and shut the closet door, and right around that time the doorbell rang, causing us both to jump again. I guess we were both just really tense given the vibe of everything in the past half hour. We went downstairs to pay for the pizza and grab plates to eat and stuff. We started eating in the kitchen and planned to bring the rest of the pizza back up to his room. While we were downstairs though, we actually heard a sound from upstairs, like in the attic. The kitchen was below JT's room, and the living room was below the attic, so the living room had a higher ceiling. We walked into the living room to listen, and sure enough, we heard a faint bump that was just loud enough to hear. We again looked at each other with wide eyes. JT said there might be an animal in the attic because he'd seen YouTube videos where raccoons somehow crawl through a hole in the roof. He somehow convinced me to go check it out. I'm not sure why we were making a joke of this, I think because neither of us wanted to admit how freaked out we were. We went back to his room together, and he gave me this huge flashlight. I opened the attic door, and he was right behind me at the doorway. I turned on this huge flashlight that doubled as a radio and stepped inside. I looked at the spilled over pile of Hot Wheels. Then I looked around this city of piles of boxes. Why am I doing this? I said back to JT, and he laughed and said just keep looking. I stepped a little deeper into the attic to look behind this tall pile of boxes, and suddenly I felt two hands on my back push me. I stumbled forward and almost fell, and I heard the laugh of JT behind me. I told him he was a dick, but then, I guess in response to my sudden and loud stumble forward, something moved from beyond this other pile of boxes. I stepped up maybe two more feet and peered behind the boxes with the flashlight, and I was petrified. There was a guy hunched over behind the pile of boxes, and he looked right back at me. I ran back out of the attic while pushing JT out, screaming, go, run. I shut the door behind us and screamed that there's someone in there. He followed me outside to the neighbor's house, who apparently wasn't home. We waited on the neighbor's stoop as we called 911. Then we called JT's mom, who seemed kind of drunk, and rushed home from her date or whatever she was doing. The police searched the house to make sure it was clear. The back door was left wide open, indicating the man escaped through there and likely climbed one of the fences to a neighboring yard. The man from what I briefly saw looked like a young guy, maybe in his early 30s. He had short black hair and facial hair. I was just glad this wasn't my house, because I wouldn't be comfortable sleeping there for a long time. 
I know JT was scared to sleep in his room for a long time after that. I was on a road trip to Las Vegas one night to meet my friends for a music festival. I was on Interstate 15, which is mostly just desert the whole way to Vegas. I chose to do the drive at night to avoid traffic. I left my house around 8 p.m., and my GPS said I'd get to my friend's Airbnb around midnight. On long drives, I usually listen to podcasts and such because I start getting tired of music after a few hours. I started listening to Mr. Nightmare Stories to pass the time, as they made the time seem to go quicker. Given that I was having a road trip, I listened to the road trip themed stories. About three hours into the drive, I had to stop for gas, so I added a detour to the route on my GPS and it showed me where to get off for the closest gas station. It was a few miles away. I got off the next exit ramp into some sketchy looking area. There were a few houses, then just desert. It was such an odd place for a few houses to be. I pulled up to this generic gas station, the only light source to be seen for pretty much miles. There were only four pumps total at this little station. I pulled up next to the one closest to the door to the inside. I went inside to pay the worker for the gas and buy a couple snacks. Not to use a derogatory term, but the guy working there seemed like kind of a hick. He had an unkempt, stained-looking beard, some dirty red trucker hat on, and the way he spoke was kind of creepy. But out here in the middle of nowhere, I didn't know what else I really expected. He tried making conversation with me, asking where I was from. That struck me as him realizing I'm not from around here. I told him I was from Cali. I asked him if he gets a lot of customers here. Kind of a weird question on my part looking back, but whatever. He said not really, not my kind at least. Then he gave me a gross smile. I had no idea what that meant, but it sounded off-putting and like a creepy flirt. The man then looked out the window toward my car and said, is that your friend? I looked outside and got a glimpse of someone walking quickly into the darkness. It looked like they were just by my car. I said, no, I don't know them, and asked the cashier what that guy just did. He shrugged his shoulders and said he didn't see. Being admittedly an attractive girl in her 20s, I deal with creepy stuff all the time, so I almost wanted to ask the cashier if he could accompany me outside to make me feel better. But honestly, I was creeped out by the cashier as well. I went outside to the pump to start filling up the tank of my car. I looked around the empty gas station lot. There was just a humming from one of the lights of the canopy above me and the sound of the cold night breeze. There were no cars or lights as far as the eye could see. Where did that guy go? And what was he doing? I looked at the window of the gas station shop and saw the cashier standing there looking directly at me. I wondered if he was doing it to make sure I was okay after that sketchy person ran off into the darkness. But that thought was negated when he started waving at me slowly. It was disgustingly creepy and I wanted to get out of there. I paid for $40 worth of gas. When I was around the 30 mark, I heard something from the small building, like a voice. I looked over to the window, expecting it to be the cashier who made the noise. But he was still inside, just standing at the window, looking at me. Then I noticed where the sound came from. There was a man peering his head around the right side wall of the small gas station store. He was waving his hands at me, motioning for me to come over, and I'm pretty sure I saw a creepy smile on his face too. I started waving and calling for the cashier in the store. He didn't move though. He just stood there, motionless, looking at me as I called for him and waved my arms. I looked back at the creepy guy who was peering his head around the corner, and he was still there, but now he wasn't hiding behind the wall anymore. He was standing fully exposed until he noticed me notice him, then started walking towards me. I removed the nozzle from my gas tank and left it dangling. I called at the cashier for help one more time. He still just stood there, motionless, looking at me. I felt my heart in my throat. This was a textbook scene directly from a Mr. Nightmare story. I got in my car and sped out of there, back on the basically deserted road, and eventually back onto the interstate. My heart was racing after that for a few minutes. Needless to say, I stopped listening to Mr. Nightmare for the rest of that road trip. I got safely to the Airbnb about an hour after that ordeal. I still have no idea what to make of it. I rent a house in Gulfport, Mississippi. It's a small house, but perfect for one person. I live alone with my dog, Gringo. The backyard is big for him to run around in, and the area is pretty nice, right by the beach, too. This happened on a summer night. 
I think a Thursday. I had just finished preparing my lunch for tomorrow and finished cleaning up the kitchen. Before going to sleep, I laid in my bed and ironically was actually watching Mr. Nightmare videos. I always like to think these videos would help me know what to do in a worst case scenario situation like a home invasion or anything of the sorts. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. But honestly, none of us ever expect something like that to happen to us. Sure, it happens to other people, but never you, right? Well, it must have been like 11.30 at night, and I was literally watching a video when the doorbell rang, and Gringo started barking. <laughs> Hearing the doorbell any time past 10 o'clock honestly is bone chilling, and raises immediate red flags and questions, like who is it and what could they want at this hour? I didn't leave my bed. I was not going to leave my bedroom to check who it could be. I was downright horrified just from the sound of the doorbell. Gringo is a pretty big dog and you can hear it in his bark, so I hoped the sound of his barks would deter anyone with bad intentions. But the doorbell rang again, and the dread of wondering who was out there and why were they at my doorstep became even worse. The doorbell was followed by loud knocking. I still didn't leave my bed. I wasn't going to go out there. When it finally seemed to stop, I felt a little relieved. Since the house is only one floor, my bedroom was ground level. My window kind of looks out to the street in front of the house, so I looked out the window just to see if anyone would be walking down the street. I stood there watching for maybe 30 seconds before I heard footsteps outside near the window. I hurried back into the bed to hide. Gringo was growling and looking out the window. I told him to be quiet. Suddenly, a voice broke the silence and said, I see you, open the window. The voice was right outside the window. Gringo started to bark again. I still did not look. The guy outside my window said, hey doggy. Gringo was going crazy. I couldn't realistically keep pretending to be asleep. I turned over to look at the window. I was looking at a creepy man with his eyes open super wide looking back at me with the only thing separating us being the bug screen of the window. I asked what do you want and he repeated himself and said, can you let me in? It's cold out here but it was literally a midsummer night in Mississippi. I said leave before I call the police. This was when he tried lifting the screen himself, and when he realized he couldn't, he started punching at it to break a hole in it. I quickly slid the window shut and locked it. I was shocked Gringo's loud barks weren't scaring this guy off. I asked the 911 operator to please send police to my house, and of course, like in so many stories I've heard before, the police showed up too late because the man was gone. He was probably on some kind of drugs. I have no idea what kind, but I could just hear it in his voice. And that comment that it was cold outside was also a dead giveaway. I don't think there was really any other appropriate way to handle this other than locking the window right away and calling 911. 